afternoon, everyone. So by the way, um, if at any point today you have questions, please do send them in and we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So Modiface um, is, is all about augmented reality. So for the past 10 years, we've been pushing facial AR, the ability to make simulations on the face, as realistically as possible for beauty products. So that includes the ability to simulate makeup, hair, and skincare products on live video. And 10 years ago, the technology was fairly premature, but year after year, it got better and better, and as computers became more capable, the technology was more um, realistic, to the point that now, if you look at our simulations of, of makeup or beauty products, it is very hard to tell it apart from the real-life product. And two months ago, L'Oreal, the world's largest beauty company, acquired Modiface, and we be became the first tech brand under the L'Oreal Group with a mission to really promote and push AR to the maximum possible extent and to the fullest realization of what it could be. Um, well, some of the things that we've done, for example, we can now do live makeup simulation on, on really any platform. So you can do it in apps, on websites, on, um, and in, in stores. And so more and more consumers are able to see beauty products being shown to them with a reflection really in any context, in any, any setting. And what we're finding is when you put this on an e-commerce site, when you put it in a store setting in, in the form of a mirror, it actually maximizes every metric that you can measure. It max, maximizes the amount of time people spend, it, the actual conversion rate, sales we've seen go up, when people know what product and what shade is best for them, and they can virtually try out a few, it actually makes it more likely that they'll actually end up buying that, the, the shade that they care about. And so, after we've done many of these implementations uh, for makeup, for hair, and, and for skin simulation, one of the things that we've found is that it's not only about the ability, that immediate impact of seeing the product, but also is what you learn from the user. So for example, when a user goes on a, say, Armani site now, that on, on a website, whether in an app, well, in a phone, or in a desktop computer, you can see live makeup simulation. What they try on, what shades they care about, tells us a lot about that user. Same thing about applications where you can see not only what a look would look like, but also how do you achieve that look. So these tutorials provide step-by-step -step information about how to achieve a smoky eye effect or a different look, which most people don't know how to apply on their face. The same thing for hair, so now we can do live detection and tracking of hair in, in live video and, and co make color changes. So you could see different color hair on your uh, live image before you actually have to commit and, and dye your hair. And everything I've shown you has been beauty brands using it. But this is a technology that's universally useful. And, and people love playing and interacting with it. And so just a few months ago, Samsung, when they launched the S9 and S9 Plus, they actually have direct makeup try-on in the camera of the app, well, in the camera of the phone, without ever needing to download an app or go on a website. And that was powered by Modiface. Our core tracking and rendering is being used by Samsung, among other hardware makers that will be launching. But as I mentioned, as useful as AR is, what we learn from what people do becomes extremely interesting. It's almost an environment where you let people play and kind of have their fantasies about the shades and colors they care about. And by understanding that, you can build a full model of what the user really cares about and what products are best for them. And so to maximize this understanding, for the past 10 years, we've been trying to see what else we can extract in augmented reality applications. So this includes the ability to assess someone's skin, so know what kind of skin concerns they might have, whether it's acne or dark spots, to be aware of those items so we can help guide them when it comes to beauty product recommendations. As well as finding their ideal skin tone, so knowing their skin tone, no matter what lighting they might be in, helps us provide the best foundation shade for each person, personalized for them. And the ability to track the iris, not only do we know what they're looking at on the screen, but also we know their eye color and eye shape, all useful data points that helps us better understand the user. As well as modeling the lighting of the environment, which is very important if you're simulating makeup and trying to understand the makeup shades a person might be wearing. And getting someone's face shape, hair shape, and hairstyle, and being able to track their entire um, hair and face in three dimensions, which is something that we can now easily do 
on live video. And finally, the ability to connect all of these dots, so knowing that someone with a particular hair, hair color and, and eye color and skin tone, how does this impact the products they try on and the products that they eventually buy? This relationship graph, once you've seen enough people interacting with an AR application, becomes extremely interesting. It can help you relate every aspect of what each user, given their unique information, maps to the products they're trying on and the combination of products they end up buying. And this information is very useful for brand managers to really understand who's buying and who's trying each unique shade so they can create better products, they can market products more effectively, and really any question that a marketing manager could ever have you can answer by simply looking at that data for just a few seconds. So really a very valuable use, um, source of information. So this is useful for brand managers, but it's also very useful for many tech companies. One example is Pinterest. Just a few weeks ago announced that they have a more inclusive way of searching for uh, pins. And what they do is they use Modiface technology to find out the skin tone of every single image or every single pin, and you can search not only by keywords, but also by skin tones. So you could find pins that are the most relevant to your skin tone. There are many other companies that will be leveraging this similar technology in the next few months as well. So that's it, and if you have any questions at this point, I'd be happy to answer them. Sure, so, so what's next? Uh, we're working on realism. So for us, that ability to differentiate what actually is the, the virtual makeup versus the actual makeup, we want to make, make that as small as possible. So focusing on realism and making sure that it, it's as accurate as possible is always a driving goal. Um, there are a few other questions that I'm seeing here. On, um, so is there any use case for the male part of the audience? So we have a significant portion of male users and there are things, for example, beard simulation and other facial hair simulations. So with men, sometimes it's a bit different in terms of what we simulate, but it's more and more becoming uh, more relevant. Another question is, how do you compensate for different lighting cameras and screens? Or how do you accurately reproduce colors? Which is a very challenging problem. So first thing that we do, we have to compensate for cameras. The second thing is we have to compensate for the device which includes the entire both processing of what the device can do, resolution, and screen of the device. And that's why for mobile phones, we usually, if you are using a more standard mobile phone like the Samsung S9, every aspect of what we created was really optimized for the S9 experience. Okay, if nothing else, thank you very much.